now what we know is that in science, this concept is so accepted at this point, meaning this concept that we have this electromagnetic field is that and now science has named it. The National Institute of Health has named it the biofield. And this biofield is this organizing field that's around you. It's an electric field and a magnetic field that we call an electromagnetic field, okay? Um, this dates back to Einstein. When you're talking about how, how long have we known this stuff, Einstein did say that anytime you have a current, it generates an electric field and a magnetic field, okay? So here's the definition of the biofield. Complex, a dynamic energy field that's involved in maintaining the integrity of the whole organism, regulating its physiology and its biochemistry, its integral in development, healing, and regeneration. So what does that mean? That means what scientists are now saying who study the biofield is that the, your biofield controls, it regulates all of your chemical reactions in your body. It regulates hormone release, for example. It regulates um, what's going to be expressed from your genes. It regulates healing. So you get a cut on your arm, and we all know that it gets inflamed, and you send a, a blood flow and nutrients, and there's an a, a increase in your immunity, and it rushes to that area where the cut is. That response is dictated by the biofield right? It's in charge of healing and regenerating the body. Now, Western medicine, going back to your point, Joel, they used to believe in this organizing field, right? So if you look back in um, like the 18th century, for instance, you'll see uh, healers, practitioners, scientists talking about some organizing energy field. Then in the 19th century, so in the 1800s is when that reductionist thinking really came to the forefront and it pushed all of this concept of the body being energy, it pushed it to the back. Um, and we started on this path of reductionism. So let's figure out the chemistry of everything, like the microscopes and everything, uh, PCR, all of this spun out from that time period. All well, right. And, and, uh, and even uh, white blood cells, you know, all, all these. Um, so, so what you're, what you're suggesting is that the, um, that the biofield, uh, determines where the white blood cells are going to run. I mean, it, w right. we, we, we do have chemistry. We do yes. have genetics. Uh, we're not going to debate that today. There are some that say we don't have cells, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. Uh, you know, so, so how does, how does all this, how does all this uh, stuff organize? And what exactly. you're suggesting is, it is it is this energy, this biofield, uh, which we still don't, you know, obviously fully understand, that helps to organize all the all this molecular, atomic, chemical, um, biological structure. Yes, that is exactly right. So, what I'm suggesting is, uh, and what a science now, and particularly biophysicists, um, have discovered is that you're, D, you're not doomed by your DNA. Your DNA is not even the ultimate blueprint of your body. So, you know, in conventional science and conventional medicine, we still teach that concept that um, your genes are transcribed and translated into proteins, for instance, and they determine, um, you know, your eye color and your health status. If your parents had heart disease, then you're probably gonna have heart disease because it's in your genes. So I'm going to take you to a place where we're not going to debate whether or not we have DNA, but um, there's a new understanding of what the role of DNA may be. And um, just to piggyback on what you said, even people who are debating that there are no cells have come to realize that certain there are certain um, tissues that, that do have cell-like structures in them, okay? So there is biochemistry in the body. And what we're saying is that the control mechanism for that bio biochemistry is not the DNA. Okay, that's what I'm saying here. And we're gonna get into what it actually is and, in a minute. And, you know, Sina, that, that's, a, that's an amazing little, like a little footnote here. 
to, because, you know, there are people that say there aren't viruses or there aren't cells or there aren't DNA. And, 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 and what most of these folks are struggling with is that they don't respond. They, they don't respond. Um, they don't respond structurally and physically like you would expect a structural and physical thing to respond all the time. Exactly. And so you didn't talk about this in your speech, but it just came to my head as you, it, it, could it be that some of the, um, the pushback on reductionist Western cell viral DNA genetic structure is because of the biofields dynamism on that structure. Yes. I love it when you start looking like that. Uh, <laughs> dynamism on that structure that then makes it behave not like a structure. Yes. That is exactly right. I just got goosebumps. Oh, man. I wish I had encapsulated that and said it during the talk, but okay. Well, now that's we what have I'm it. here for. I, I, I'm here to, I'm here to dumb it down. See, <laughs> yeah. That's why it takes a farmer and a doctor to come together to get the full <laughs> yeah. picture. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, you are absolutely right. And so what I'm, and we're going to, let's, let's unpack this. Okay. Let's unpack exactly what you said one step at a time. Okay. So the point number one is that the biofield is what carries the instructions or the blueprint. It's not the DNA, it's the field. So like I said, the field will instruct how the genes are gonna be expressed, how the cells are gonna function, how your body is gonna build up and break itself down and repair itself. This may actually be, Joel, the reason why some people, as you know, can eat junk food and yeah. smoke and live to be 90. And other people will eat like super healthy, but they are reacting violently to environmental toxins, right? right? It could also be why two people could have the same genetic mutation and have completely different health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like what you're talking about. This, this concept is starting going to start once it sinks in and you're really starting to get it, it's going to start explaining some, a lot of these differences that we are seeing in human health and in scientific literature and in outcomes. So how does this work? We know that stress, trauma, and emotions are stored in your field, in your biofield. And we know that those um, energetic imprints can turn genes on and off and can turn hormones, you know, upregulate hormones, downregulate hormones, and so forth, which means you change your biology in real time. Okay. You shape your biology in real time based on your emotions based on your level of stress. Okay, so let me add, interject a little bit of science here to bring it back down to that level. So your biofield is an elect is electromagnetic energy, right? And it's, by the way, we can measure it. The field has been measured. So it is made up of electromagnetic energy. We know that energy carries information. So Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared, means energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. On a basic level, that means that energy and mass are interchangeable. So they're just different forms of the same thing. So under the right condition, energy can become mass and mass can become energy. We as humans don't see it that way. Right, we don't see. Oh, how can a beam of light and a walnut be different forms of the same thing? Right, we don't mm -hmm. see it that way because we've been trained to think of the body as a machine, and nothing more but atoms and part and cells and molecules. Okay, but nature doesn't actually see it that way. Everything in nature is connected, and everything works in a rhythm. So apply this to emotions. What are emotions? They're not just energy, uh, sorry, they're not just feeling, they're an energy. They are a frequency, an energetic frequency that sends information because all energy carries information. That information is what determines which genes are turned on and off. So for example, if you are carrying an energetic imprint in your field of fear, that vibrates at a low frequency, which is measured, and it sends a message of fear to the body. 
Okay, that signals inflammation. It signals cortisol to be, re to be released because you're signaling that there's something to be afraid of. And so your body goes into fight or flight. Okay, and we're all familiar with fight or flight on, on this podcast, right? So carrying the emotion of fear will generate disease in your body because it keeps you in a constant state of fight or flight. The opposite of that, if you carry vibrational frequencies of gratitude, love, joy, fruits of the spirit, that promotes healing. It promotes anti-inflammatory mechanisms in the body. It builds resiliency. Now, when you hold on to fear, pain, resentment, grief, your body will mirror that state. It mirrors that energetic state. We call these symptoms. Your symptoms, the physical symptoms, are your tell, right? So it's like you're playing a card game and the symptoms are your tell. It's giving away to the whole rest of the world which emotions you're actually struggling with. It's like showing your cards to the whole wide world, okay? <laughs> so, and... People who can read these, people who are in tune, who, you know, like when I'm meeting with somebody and I see certain symptoms in somebody, um, I know your story. I know what you're holding on to, you know, and you can track it back to what organs, for example, um, are in this state of energetic imbalance. So quick story to uh, drive home the, the impact that your field has on your, on your physical health. One of my clients had had MS. She lost her vision and tried all these physical things, physical strategies to get the vision back. She couldn't do it. I suggested to her that the vision was lost because she had an emotional imbalance, which leads to an energetic imbalance. We She realized that she couldn't face the loss of her nephew. She was grieving. And she felt guilt. Her body responded to that by blinding her, right? She literally couldn't face the guilt. So her body blinded her. When she sat with that pain, with that guilt, with the emotion, and she moved through it and she handed it back. She's, she's a devout Christian. She handed it back to God, prayed for forgiveness, handed it back to him. Her eyesight returned almost immediately. Okay, she did nothing else but hand that back to God. That's because your body listens to your energy. It is holding on to whatever is stuck in your field. And that which is stuck in your field is creating your biology, meaning your physical body is downstream of your field. Okay, it is downstream of your field. So, when you're trying to reverse a dis-ease, for example, and by the way, that's what dis-ease means, right? To just be out of balance. When you are trying to heal, recover from some kind of dis-ease, we tend to chase the chemistry. We're getting lab tests done, right? Food sensitivity tests, chemical tests, cholesterol tests, hormone tests. And I'm not saying those things aren't helpful. They can help you figure out the puzzle, okay? But what I'm saying is even those of us who were like, okay, I know the body's not a machine. We still primarily chase the biochemistry. And so the answers that we're coming up with to heal ourselves are on that biochemical level. We're taking supplements, for example, to try to fill in some missing gaps based on whatever the tests are showing us. We're taking more herbals. And again, not that those things are bad, but they're not what's going to get you to fully heal the body. This is one reason why I believe, Joel, that let's say somebody heals. Let's say somebody's able to get out of, get into remission, as they call it. And as you know, I don't believe in that term. But if somebody, let's say, um, gets rid of the physical symptoms by chasing the chemistry and they get into what we call is remission, you will hear a lot of times, oh, the cancer came back, right? It was in remission and it came back. Or... The autoimmune condition was in remission and then it came back. Well, why? Why did it come back? Because presumably the person has now changed their diet, right? They're taking the healthy supplements. They're doing all the things that they learned to get into remission. Why did it not work? Why'd they go back and get sick? 
it's because they're still creating the same physical body because they didn't change the blueprint. They didn't change what's in the field. You have to change the energetic imprints in your field. You have to bring coherence to the field is what I'm saying. If there's not coherence in the field, it will create a diseased body. So some of the ways you can know if, you're, if your field is blocked, if it's carrying some of this low vibrational energy is if you're struggling with chronic fatigue or pain, or you feel tension in your body, or you're having sleep issues, or you feel constantly stressed or overwhelmed or anxious, um, if if you're unable to heal. So if you do have symptoms and you can't get rid of them, these all are indications that there's an energy balance, there's a stuck emotion sitting there in the field. Is this, Sina just occurred to me, is this why, uh, is this why the, the placebo effect um, works sometimes because a person believes so strongly that this is going to make me better, uh, that they change their biofield and, and, and we get, and we have the, you know, we, we all, we all recognize the placebo effect. There is a placebo effect. Is that why you think maybe that's why that is? Yes. Uh, okay. So you jump to the end of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting too smart, Joel. <laughs> like, dumb me it down a little bit. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So let's um can we put a pin in that until we get to the yeah. end of this one? Right. But you're exactly right on. Friends, want to dive deeper into our thought-provoking conversations? Become part of the Beyond Labels family today by joining below. For any gift amount, you'll get access to the full uncut episodes every contribution whether big or small keeps this podcast going so join us and expand your beyond labels experience thank you